Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Does Ole Gunnar Solskjaer deserve a new contract? From my perception, I think he does, reflecting on the progress he's made. Now, Solskjaer has won a new nine million a year contract. Sources at Old Trafford say talks are set to begin any day on the new deal. Later on this month, Solskjaer will enter the final year of his three-year contract. Earlier on this season, he said that Solskjaer's future was in doubt because he admitted that nobody had spoke to him over a new contract. Woodward recently did a statement and he said the progress by Solskjaer and the players this season is clear. So in that aspect, Woodward is backing Solskjaer. Solskjaer is set to have his final say on our transfer incoming deals. I think we're having a transfer summit this week. Uh, Solskjaer is going to sit down with our new chefs and discuss our transfer targets and in general discuss our transfer plans for the summer because this year's summer transfer window is the biggest in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial career but I'm expecting him to get the backing he deserves because we have got a director of footballing it's John Murtough and it's our first ever director of football. And I did say, didn't I, that's one of the structural changes that we needed at the club. We was in for a director of football for a while. But this John Murtough, you know, he knows the club inside out because he's been at Man United for like eight years. And Darren Fletcher, he's our technical director and he knows the club through thick and thin, because he endured two decades as a player for Man United. Solskjaer has not been backed enough in the transfer windows he has endured so far. You know, he has made some good signings, he's spent almost £300 million, but as yet, he hasn't got all the players that he wanted to recommend in. So in that aspect, the blame stems from the board. The board has been one of the biggest problems at the club for several years uh, because our recruitment policy has been poor for a while. The managers that we've had haven't got the players that they wanted to recommend in and we've overpaid for players. But Woodward has come out several times to show his support for Ollie and he did say towards the end of last year he will back him with a long-term plan centred around summer transfer windows. And even enjoying them bad periods, Woodward assured that Solskjaer's job was safe because our board have got a soft stance on Solskjaer with him being a club legend. Disregarding being a club legend, I don't think he'd have been Manchester United manager now. Because we have endured very bad periods under Ollie where he can turn around and say, yeah, he was lucky not to be sacked. <laughs> Solskjaer said earlier on this season, we may not do business as usual in the summer, due to the pandemic, but he said he's interested in bringing in players that will be a perfect fit for the club. I'm expecting us to make around three or four signings in the summer and a new centre-back and a new forward are the two priorities. Now, like I've said in regards to Solskjaer, I don't think he's a long-term manager for Man United. I hope I'm wrong. But I think he does deserve at least another season at the football club. This is his second full season at the moment. There's been a lot of Manchester United fans demanding Ole Gunnar Solskjaer out of 
the club. But when we have been inconsistent, not all of the blame blame has stemmed from Solskjaer anyway. It's never all the manager's fault. My biggest concern about Solskjaer is his decision making because in the vast majority of the games he's managed at Man United, he's been tactically naive. So I don't like the way he has approached a lot of games, especially the big ones as well. But there's been some games where he has showed tactical flexibility, but he's got to show that persistently. Uh, Solskjaer must win a trophy at Man United this year. Uh, Gary Neville has said the exact same thing. Because if we win a trophy, that marks progress under Oli. You know, Solskjaer's not yet won a trophy as Man United manager. And we haven't won a trophy since 2017. And that's nowhere near good enough to our standards. You know, a club of our stature need to be winning trophies. You know, the FA Cup is a chance of a trophy. And the Europa League is a chance of a trophy. I don't see us winning the Premier League for a good three, four, maybe even five years yet. I don't see us winning the title at all under Solskjaer. Uh, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013, so we haven't won it now for like eight years. Earlier on this season, we was in the title race. At one point, we was top of the league, but there was a period where we dropped too many points, so we're no longer in the title race. Uh, top four is our aim and I can assure now Manchester United will finish in the top four reflecting on that 1-0 win against West Ham at Old Trafford. I don't really like our brand of football. Our football's very, very boring, I'm going to be honest with you. You know, our brand of football wasn't good under Jose Mourinho. I hated the way Jose Mourinho approached the big games. It was part of the bus football under Mourinho. And, you know, under Louis van Gaal, it was turgid football. And we're seeing the exact same thing in a lot of games now. I just want Man United to play expansive football. I want us, you know, to create a lot of chances. I want us to score good goals. But you can definitely identify the weaknesses in the squad. I've got to say, Solskjaer is the best manager since Ferguson. Because we've enjoyed very good periods under him where we have seen consistency. And there's been some games in them good periods where we've got the best out of the team and all has improved certain players. And we've got to credit Solskjaer in quite a few aspects. You know, we're second in the Premier League. A lot of United fans are saying that's not an achievement. But I think there's been progress from last season. Because I've heard United fans saying that, you know, Ole is overachieving. But there's some United fans saying it's not overachieving. Some are saying, you know, we are lucky to be in that position because the teams around us haven't been so consistent. You know, we've got a fantastic away record in the Premier League. We haven't lost away from home in the Premier League for over a year. We are unbeaten in our last 22 Premier League away games. Earlier on this season, Solskjaer got us to the EFL Cup semi-final. He's got us to the FA Cup quarters in the Europa League last 16. You know, did well last season in his first full season. Got us to three semi-finals, got us qualification for the Champions League and got us a third place finish. And he has got rid of a lot of players since he got recommended in. And last season, we went on a 19-game unbeaten run in all competitions. We was 14 unbeaten in the Premier League. And obviously Solskjaer did very, very well uh, when he first came in as the interim manager. He won 14 games out of 19 in all competitions. Um, he was the interim manager for three months. But reflecting on what he did, the club decided to give him the job permanently two years ago. 
And a lot of United fans did say we made a mistake giving Solskjaer the job permanently and some said we give him the job too soon. Maybe we should have waited until the end of that particular season to decide or not whether to give him the job. <clears throat> but yeah, we did appoint him in, in December 2018 to replace Jose Mourinho. You know, he's our fourth permanent manager since Ferguson. We've sat three managers since Ferguson. We sat Moyes, Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho. You know, Moyes is the worst manager we've ever had. Louis van Gaal, we had a good start under him, but then it all went downhill. And under Jose Mourinho, we had one good season because Jose Mourinho won three trophies in his first season, plus got us a second place finish and then obviously in his second season it all went downhill I think mistakes have been made <clears throat> uh, since Ferguson retired and that's one of the main explanations why we haven't been as consistent as we'd like to have been <laughs> you know we spent over £1 billion on players in the last 8 years <clears throat> and we've certainly overpaid for players but um, like I say there has been a lot of players on our agenda um, <clears throat> I just want to give you some news on Erling Haaland Erling Haaland is our transfer priority. <clears throat> Borussia Dortmund have given us an update on Erling Haaland's future. Borussia Dortmund's sporting director, Michael Zorg, has said Borussia Dortmund are prioritising finishing in the top four in order to keep Erling Haaland. <clears throat> now, apparently... <clears throat> Erling Haaland is demanding £350,000 a week to go to another club. £350,000 a week is a substantial amount. But there has been a lot of clubs in for him. And it would be good to see Ole Gunnar Solskjaer reunite with the, with the player. Solskjaer knows Erling Haaland well. Solskjaer was the one that gave Erling Haaland his debut at just the age of 16 at Mulder. And back in December 2019, Solskjaer and Woodward went to Norway to meet up with Erling Haaland. <laughs> Earlier on this season, Solskjaer did mention that he's following Erling Haaland's progress and he said he's keeping in touch with Erling Haaland. The Daily Mail recently said that Man City were leading the race. I think Dortmund are demanding in the excess of £100 million. He does have a release clause, but that doesn't become active until next year. Since Haaland's arrival at Dortmund, he's been a revelation. He's been at Dortmund over a year. Dortmund paid just £17 million for him, and he has got a contract with Dortmund until 2024. <coughs> And his agent, Minio Riola, uh, said earlier on this season that there's only like four clubs in England that can afford Haaland. <clears throat> now, obviously, you know the news on Pau Torres from Villarreal. Um, ESPN recently said that Pau Torres has emerged as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's top target. It mentions that we can get Pau Torres for less than £56 million. Pounds. Uh, that's his release clause. So yeah, we can get him for less than his £56 million pound release clause if Villarreal failed to qualify for Euro. And Man United have been in contact with Villarreal over Pau Torres. 
Uh, Jules Conde, he's still on our agenda. There was narratives coming out earlier on this season saying that we was unwilling to meet Jules Conde's £68 million release clause, but it says we are prepared to pay £61 million for him. It said earlier on this season we were considered as the favourites to sign him. Jules Conde's teammate, Diego Carlos, um, he come out and said that Jules Conde is ready to play for a big club. So Diego Carlos spoke highly about Jules Conde. But his performances for Sevilla this season have been outstanding. <coughs> He's been at Sevilla almost two years. Sevilla paid £22 million for him from Bordeaux in the summer of 2019. He's got a contract with Sevilla until 2024. <coughs> and uh, I've got to say, there's good players at Manchester United. And there's players that are really, really improving. You know, Dean Henderson, he's done very, very well in the games he's played in this season. <coughs> you know, I think Dean Henderson is now reliable enough to become our number one goalkeeper. Because uh, he's done well in the games he's played in this season, like I mentioned. And he's got that experience behind him because he endured two successful loans with Sheffield United. Before the start of this season, Dean Henderson signed a six-year contract with Man United. <clears throat> Luke Shaw, he's been our player of the season by far. You know, Luke Shaw's got forward really well. He's got into good positions. He's put good crosses into the box. Provided width, uh, defensively he's been superb and Luke Shaw's had a good career at Man United apart from his injuries. Shaw's been at the club over six years and he still remains our first choice left back despite the arrival of Alex Tellez. <coughs> uh, Merrick Bay, I think he's done very, very well in the games he's played in this season. Um, he's intercepted the ball well, he's showed that ability to play out from the back, he's been effective in the air. My only element of concern about Bay is injury prone, so in that aspect he is a liability. Now Solskjaer recently confirmed that Man United wait a second, have opened up talks with Eric Bay over a new contract. I think we're looking to get him a three year contract, uh, Bay's into what the final 15 months of his current contract. Bay's been at the club since 2016. We got him for £30 million pounds from Villarreal back in 2016. <laughs> Harry Maguire. Now, I think he's enjoyed some good games this season where he's actually been good from set pieces. He's made some good clearances. He's intercepted the ball well and he's got forward well. But he's also enjoyed some poor games. But I can assure Harry Maguire wasn't worth the £80 million we got him for. He's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and the second most expensive signing. Uh, Anwan Pasaka, I've also been impressed with him in some games this season where he's actually showed good attacking intent, his crossing's been good, uh, defensively he's been good. But he's also enjoyed some poor games where he's been caught out a few times and he's lacked that attacking intent. I think Anwan Basaka is the foreseeable future for Man United. I think he can emulate into the next Gary Neville. You know, this is what second full season at Man United. We've got Anwan Basaka in a deal worth fifty million pounds from Crystal Palace in the summer of twenty nineteen. He's the only recognised senior right back. And he recently said we're interested in getting a right back, you know, to provide competition for Amwan Pasaka. Uh, Scott McTominway, he's a decent player. He's enjoyed some very good games this season, you know, where he's kept the ball well, he's passed the ball well, he's got forward well. 
for his old St. George St. Paul games. You know, McTominay, he's not at that level as we want him to be at, as yet, but can he emulate that level? You know, he's still young, he's got a lot of development in him. Just after the first lockdown, McTominay signed a five-year contract with Man United, so he committed his future with the club. Uh, Fred, you know, I think aspects of his game have improved. Uh, when he plays well, Fred, he can drive forward well, he can create chances, he can pass the ball well, he can also break up play. But Fred's not at the level as I, as we want him to be as yet, so it's the same thing regarding McTominay. I've got to say, though, regarding Fred, he was an exceptional player during his time in Ukraine. We got him in a deal worth £52 million. <laughs> uh, Donny van der Beek, he's also done good in the games he's played in this season. But Donny van der Beek has played nowhere near as much as I expected. Most of his appearances have come from the bench. He's only started two games in the league this season. Donny van der Beek can't play at the moment anyway because he's been out of injury. So I think he's missed our last seven games due to this muscular problem. Uh, Paul Pogba, we was getting the best out of him before he sustained this fine injury. Uh, Paul Pogba's going to be back, I think, very, very soon. You know, Bruno Fernandes... You know, you got to say he's made the difference in the team. You know, he's our best player and is the best signing we have made since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Fernandez has been at the club over a year now and don't forget Fernandez did say on his 12-month anniversary that he was planning on spending many years at Man United. You know, in a lot of his games at Man United, he's been consistent, but there's also been a few games where he has looked off the pace and... I think at some point he does need a rest because we have overplayed him. Bruno Fernandes has won Player of the Month now quite a few times, reflecting on his good performances. Uh, there was narratives coming out not so long ago saying that Bruno Fernandes was refusing to sign a new contract until he has assurances over the club's long-term plans. <laughs> Says we was willing to double his wages to £200,000 a week. Now, uh, Mason Greenwood, I've been very, very impressed with him since he broke into our first team squad. You know, most of the time when we play Greenwood, we play him on that right-hand side, but sometimes we do play him up top as well, but I think he's more effective out on the right-hand side. You know, Mason Greenwood's a player that can score goals when he wants to. He can get good runs in behind. He can create chances. You know, Mason Greenwood has been a United player since the age of seven. And he's been in our senior squad since 2019. He's made 80-odd first, first, first team appearances for Man United. Earlier on this season, he signed a new four-year contract with the club. Ollie's been defending Mason Greenwood a lot this season. Because earlier on in the season, I didn't really have much of a perception on him because he was in and out of the team. You know, Marcus Rashford, you know, he's a very, very good player. You know, he's just come back from an ankle injury. <laughs> we just need to keep Marcus Rashford out on the left because that's where he's more effective. And Cavani, he's made a fantastic impact since he's come in. And I did say, you know, Arkham's squad is good enough to finish at least in the top four. But yeah, uh, Man United have been facing an injury crisis. But, you know, Solskjaer's come out and said that he hopes five of our injured players will be available for the game against AC Milan in the second leg of the Europa League last 16 at the San Siro. This is... A massive week for Man United. We've got two big games, you know, Milan on Thursday in the second leg and Leicester at the weekend in the FA Cup quarter final. And it's going to be interesting to see how Ole Gunnar Solskjaer approaches them two games. Um, 
like I updated you earlier on today, Solskjaer is planning to sell four players to bolster our transfer budget. Solskjaer is hoping to raise around £60 million. So it says we may sell Lingard, Mata, Phil Jones and Diego Delo. But I think we'll probably sell more than four players in the summer. You know, there's a good chance that Cavani's going to leave the club in the summer. Uh, Solskjaer recently said that Cavani is closer to joining Boca Juniors than staying at Man United. Prior to that, he said his future's not been decided. Edison Cavani's father uh, has already said that Cavani's unhappy at Man United and he wants to uh, leave the club and he's not comfortable in England. Now, reports in Argentina said that Cavani wants to leave Man United after just a season and he wants to join Boca Juniors on a three-year contract. But earlier on this season, it said Cavani wanted to stay at Man United uh, beyond this season. And Solskjaer said he was set for contract extension talks. We got him on a free transfer last summer. He signed a one-year contract with Man United with an option of a second year. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, Matic, uh, we could sell him in the summer because he isn't one of our first choice midfielders but he still gets his chances and as you all know I've always had my strong reservations about Nemanja Matic because he's always been a slow player. He's been at the club almost four years now. We got him in a deal worth £40 million from Chelsea back in 2017. <coughs> uh, Romero, do you think we should offload him? You know, David De Gea, there's a good chance that we'll sell him in the summer so we can make Dean Henderson our first choice goalkeeper. Recent narrative said we are willing to listen to offers for De Gea. Uh, the Sun said not so long ago that he was wanted by PSG. Potticino's looking for a number one to replace Kayla Navas. Uh, De Gea has got two years left on his contract and he's on £375,000 a week. <clears throat> I think we value De Gea at £50 million. Um, he hasn't been playing in recent matches because he's been out due to personal reasons, but he's now back in Manchester and he's been self-isolating. Um, earlier on this season, Solskjaer warned De Gea that his number one jersey was under threat. He's been a long servant at Man United. This is his 10th season at the football club. He's made over 500 appearances in all competitions. A few years ago, De Gea was regarded as the best goalkeeper in the world, but in the last couple of years, he's made calamitous mistakes, so reflecting on that, he has become a liability. I think there's a good chance he'll go back to Spain if he leaves Man U in the summer. <coughs> And like I said, uh, there's, there's still a chance Paul Pogba will leave Man United in the summer transfer window. Paul Pogba has had a long-running transfer saga. You know, he's been relentlessly linked to a move to Real Madrid. PSG have been in for him and his former club Juventus have been in for him. Pogba enjoyed four very good years with Juventus before he rejoined Manchester United. Said a few weeks ago, we revealed our asking price for Pogba and it was £100 million. There was narratives coming out earlier on this season saying that Pogba's open to staying at Man United after making a transfer U-turn and he's willing to discuss a new contract. Solskjaer suggested earlier on this season that Pogba could sign a new contract because we've held talks over his Future and Solskjaer said he's happy at the club. <clears throat> uh, Martial, there's a lot of Man United fans that are saying we should sell him in the summer because Anthony Martial has been out of form for the vast majority of this season. <clears throat> so there you go. 
Uh, your Milan preview for the second leg will be coming up uh, later on. And tomorrow I'll then be giving you my starting 11 prediction for the game. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.